minutes late tonight, so thank you everybody for your patience. Thanks for coming on. Hey, I know, I think the last few Facebook videos that we've done have been jammed up a little bit. I'm not sure if that's the program or, or how we're filming it online, so if you're having trouble getting it uh, going, you may just want to kind of stop it, wait about 20 minutes, and then watch live what we post and uh, we'll be able to kind of update you on some things there. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at a story from uh, the, the book of 1 Kings, and we're going to be at 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, and we're going to be talking about, um, well actually we're going to go back to, to 1 Kings 18, and it talks about the famine that's in the land, and you have Elijah, and you have Ahab. And Elijah, of course, blames the drought on Ahab. Ahab blames the drought on Elijah. And they kind of have a showdown on the mountain. I don't know if you remember that story. They each build an altar. And whoever's altar is, is lit with fire uh, shows that uh, that's the one who God is with. And people know uh, who is in charge of the, the drought. And, and so uh, Ahab will build his uh, altar and they'll dance all of his priests will dance around the altar and it does not light on fire this goes on for a long amount of time and then Elijah finally builds his altar and even pours water over the top of it to kind of show God's amazing power and instantly uh, that altar is lit and everybody sees uh, that God is real and Baal the God that Ahab was following is not real that Ahab was in the one in charge of the drought. And in a kind of more gruesome part of the Bible, Elijah instantly orders the, the, the priests of Baal to be killed uh, so they would no longer uh, share the, the false news throughout the land. Well, that kind of brings us to 1 Kings 19. And uh, what happened is Ahab told his wife Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all of his prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I don't make your life like that of one of them. So basically what Jezebel is doing is threatening Elijah's life. And Elijah was afraid. He ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. And while he himself... When a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Elijah said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then he laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, probably more calmly the second time around. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, 
broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. And when you get there, anoint Haziel, Haziel over king of Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshai, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, and Abel Meloah, who succeeds you as a prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Haziel. And Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees who have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So you have Elijah just a day after he won the battle of the altars, if you will. And just one day after that, he's afraid for his life, forgetting everything that God had done for him. And he's running for his life. And not only does he forget everything that God said, but he tells God, I'm ready to die. I can't. I mean, he just had an amazing victory. And one day later, he, he's ready to die. And God leads him to the top of the mountain where there's this great big roaring uh, wind, right? And then there's an earthquake. And then there's a fire. And, and God wasn't speaking through any of those things. And you just kind of had to wait. For things to get quiet. And then Elijah could hear what God was doing. In the last few minutes, and even now as we make this video, uh, I'm going to have to do a selfie right now and hold this. Can people see me? Yep. In the last five minutes to make this video, this might be the last one we do at home, uh, the computer uh, went through a, a restart, and I couldn't get my computer working until 6.31. Uh, the dogs were fighting. Then we put them outside, and the dogs were still fighting. Then we put them in separate rooms, and the dogs are still fighting. Denise had to go and quiet them down right now. Uh, that's just within the last 10 minutes. There's a lot of noise and things in this house, and you'll probably still hear a lot of noise and things at this house. And in, and in our lives, there's always a lot of noise. There's so many things that are going on, and we're trying to hear what God has to say, and it just becomes really hard to do that with all of the outside distractions, problems, stresses, panics. And you should have seen me trying to get this going with the, at 6.30 when the computer's not working and the dogs are fighting and I'm pulling my hair out and know somehow I've got to calm and compose myself so we can do a Bible study at 6.30. That's hard to do. Have you ever just been stressed out and in a panic when it seems like everything is going wrong? Well, Elijah knows exactly how you feel. He's terrified, he's scared, and he's on the run even after God came through to him. And God wants to communicate with him. And isn't it interesting that God doesn't do it in a loud way, just like everything else kind of going on in his life. You know, as a school teacher, you know, sometimes eighth graders can get loud. And I've always learned what's the best way to get their attention when things get loud and you, and you want to communicate with them. Now, if, if, you're, a, if you're a smart teacher, you know, uh, you, you'll learn just to be quiet. And I've sat in the front of my room and the kids are talking. And I'll just kind of stand there in the front of the room and I'll just be quiet. And then sooner or later, the, the, the noises just kind of die down and I'm just looking at them because they know uh, that I'm waiting for them to zip it so I can say something. Uh, one thing that you really shouldn't try to do as a teacher is to overshout uh, what's going on. Usually when I get louder, the kids get louder, and it just becomes a mess. I find it interesting that God uses the same tactic, and sometimes I wonder why. And this is what I came up with today. God doesn't want to compete with all of the other noises in your life. All the other things in your life. You know why? Because you shouldn't have to. Uh, he's the, the number one thing in our life. And sometimes we just have to find a way to quiet all this stuff down and not be in a panic so we can hear that still, small voice 
than what he has to say. See, things are a lot more calm now because the dogs are quiet and, and uh, this room is quiet. We didn't plan it this way, but maybe it worked out for the best. We need to find a way to quiet all, all the things that stress us out, all the things that we're worried about, all the noises that just make us go to God. And just like Elijah, God, don't you see that I'm stressed? Don't you see that I care? Everybody's trying to kill me. There's nobody left to follow me. And then all the, you know, the earthquake rumbles, the fire goes, and, 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 you know, and the winds blow. And then finally God is just like, shh. And he's in that small, still whisper. I think it's very interesting what he asks him. Elijah, what are you doing here? When we, we talk a lot of Sunday about healing in our lives, it's really hard to find healing if all our attention is on the things that are stressing us out. And we need to get quiet before God. Why? Because it shows that He has our attention. He's the number one thing. And then He can do a couple of things with us. You see, I know a lot of people that are actually quiet. For their quiet time, they get a nice place to kind of study but you know what? They're running the show. They're number one. You know, they read their Bible and they pray. You know, God, I'm really stressed out. I'm really thinking, amen, and off they go. Uh, and never once did they just sit there and be still to hear what God has to say. A lot of times we have our quiet times, but in reality, we're running the show, and it's all about us. No, we sometimes we have to zip it. And just say, God, what, what are you saying? Because what does that do? It puts him first and us second. Then we can listen to God. You know, we, we all want to end up somewhere. We all want to go somewhere. We all want to be better than what we are now. We, all, we want our church to go and move places. But you can't get somewhere else until you know exactly what? Where you are. A lot of us use our phone for directions, uh, and I have to punch something in to find something, but my phone has to know first where I am before it tells me where I need to go. We're, we're quiet before the Lord, so He can honestly tell us where we are. And then we're quiet before the Lord, so He can tell us where we need to go. Okay, and, uh, and God's like, go back. And isn't it interesting? Elijah, in his panic, said, oh, God, there's nobody left. It's only me. And as I read the Bible, no, there's Jehu. He'll help you. Um, anoint Elisha. He'll help you. And, oh, there are 7,000 in Israel right now whose knees have not bowed down to Baal. Elijah, you're not alone. He was 7,000 people off of what his reality really was because he was in such a panic. And when God shows us where he wants us to go, sometimes we need to have his perspective rather than ours. Because there's been times I've been more than 7,000 people off. Do you know what I'm saying? Thinking of when I look at a situation compared to how God looks at a situation. And, it's almost, and, and, and remember, God says you've got to go back. We, we can't have a quiet time before the Lord to escape reality. We need a quiet time before the Lord to equip us to get through reality. We have to go back and face those things that maybe we're avoiding about ourselves or things around us. We, we have to be able to move forward through the difficult things. And God sees so very, very clearly how to do it. So instead of panicking, why don't we just slow down, be quiet, and listen to Him? It's, it's how He works His healing in our lives. It's how He works His guidance in our lives. And a lot of times we can't listen if there's too much noise going on. What kind of things do you need to quiet down in your life tonight so God has your attention? And can you ask Him tonight, God... Where am I? What am I doing here? And God, where are we going? What's the way forward? 
And through his word, quietly in that still small voice, he can speak to you. Sometimes through the Holy Spirit, that holy hunch is, is what a, a, a favorite teacher of mine called it. That holy hunch will just kind of lead you and speak to you into what you really need to do and go. Uh, and, and don't just pray that for yourself. I, I'd really appreciate it. And I'd begin to start doing this and, and, and hope that you can do it every day. God, pray for our church. God, where, where are we? What are we doing here? as a church right now. God, where do you want us to go? And I'd love it if you prayed that prayer and you, and you can really hear God saying some things to you. I, I'd really like to hear that from you. So tonight, is there a lot of noise? Is there a lot of stress? Is there a lot of panic? Can we find a way to quiet our minds, renew our minds, like we talked about on Sunday, so he is first, we are second, and he can show us where we are. In Elijah's case, what all the successes and victories he's brought him through, and then getting that equipping and that peace so we can go back, move forward, and move forward to where he wants us to go. If he's in charge, we've got to zip it and let him lead us. Bruce has a great song for us tonight, The Quiet Voice of God. But we're going to shift our, uh, if you want to shift over for some time to worship for the next couple of minutes. Give me a minute to kind of set it here. Okay. Let's look at it. It says you can't turn yeah, my can't phone. Turn so I got to keep it like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're learning all sorts of things today. Oh, you can't flip it. Oh, okay. We switch camera people, so I'm sorry, Bruce. Give me just a moment, so again. Uh, okay, what if I did this? Nope. I'll just let you listen and I'll do the best I can, guys. Here we go. I appreciate those of you giving a shout out to Bruce. Tell him thanks for posting that for us. If you want to hear that again, I think it's clear and a little better sound on his page for those of you that are friends with him. And if you're not friends with Bruce, you can send him a request. And I'm sure he'd be glad to see you on there. I, I love that part where it says, Lord, speak to my heart and I am wholly thine. It's just what we, were, it's just what we talked about. God, you, you are first. And, and I'm just going to be quiet. 
and listen. Let's, let's do something a little awkward, even though it's online, okay? Uh, let's just be silent for a couple minutes. And uh, just, just sit before God and ask Him, God, what am I doing here? Where am I? Where am I going? Well, as soon as I turn this computer off or flip off my, my phone, what kind of things await me? In my family? Just in my life? And the, the things that I have to face, God. Maybe I'm just a bit afraid to deal with. How do I face it? What do I need to do? How, how do you see it? God, just uh, speak to us every day. And Lord, we just openly confess a lot of times we miss what you're saying because we're too loud. We're too busy talking and we don't do enough listening. There's too much going on in our life that's just pounding through our brain and we just don't take time uh, to turn it off and to listen to you. God, forgive us when we don't listen. And thank you for just calming us down and speaking to us in that still, small voice. For those that are hurting, God, I pray for healing tonight. For those that are stressed, God, tonight, I pray for your blessings and your power and your provision tonight. And for those that are lost, confused, just wondering, God, I pray you give them direction tonight. Lord, we pray for our church. We want to know very much, Lord, what are we doing? Where are we going? And how do you see it? Uh, Father, help us as a church to listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Did God say anything to you, even in those weird few moments? I, I know he did to me. Just, just even getting even here with all this online in the audience, just taking a little time to be quiet. It's, it's amazing what God can do. And uh, Satan fights it. It's a proven fact that the average, the, the average time that it takes for a negative thought to pop into your head when you're quiet is like 1.4 seconds. I read that somewhere. So if you were distracted or if negative things popped in your head, even those few seconds of silence, don't panic. It's normal because the enemy doesn't want us to be quiet and listen. So it takes work. It takes practice. Uh, but uh, God will reach through and, and show you and say to you, uh, here, here's something he said to me. And I remember this verse. If God is for us, who or what? can be against us. Uh, God says, you're, you're 7,000 people stronger than what you think you are right now. Maybe more. That was the message to Elijah. Thank you so much uh, for, for bearing with everything tonight. We look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. And uh, we'll be praying for good weather. And just keep an eye on Facebook, YouTube for updates. We love you. If you have any prayer requests that need to be put out there for the prayer list or for us to be praying tonight, Put that out there. I know a lot of us have been praying for uh, Debbie Downer after losing her dad, Elvis. Their, their family service is going to be Friday. Uh, so keep lifting them up in prayer. Uh, it's just a lot of other. Keep lifting Sharon and, and Jeff up in prayer. Uh, any Anything else that just needs to be our, across our attention, just kind of drop that in the comments. And, and we'll keep that going uh, and just be praying for you. Okay, guys, have a great night. Let's listen to see what God has next. Thanks, everybody.